Hi there, I'm Stacy, the encaustic mixed media artist behind Studio Stacy. Encaustic literally means to burn in. So I paint with beeswax and a torch and because it's mixed media, pretty much anything else I can get my hands on. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Consider subscribing and joining this artsy community. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, which helps me get introduced to more like-minded artsy folks like yourself. Good afternoon. In the studio, picking up the camera, it is a complete disaster in here. A complete disaster. I'll flip the camera on and show you, but I have, um, of course, the different sketches I have been working on out. I have a paint from the 100 Day Project. I have 100 Day Project stuff out, and I'm about to make a bigger mess. <laughs> the reason I wanted to pick up the camera and come over here today is I wanted to start on a big painting. Holy cow, crazy. Anyway, thank you so very much for voting on those sketches probably, I don't know, three, four, five videos ago now. Number one was a huge fan favorite, followed by number five and number th four. Number five and number four. But I'm going to start with number one, and I need to prep a panel with some encaustic gesso. Um, I had already prepped these panels, but unfortunately the gesso that I prepped them with is not going to work. So... I have to re-prep the panel with some encaustic gesso. I'm going to try to find a space here in the studio to do that. And then um, probably just let that dry um, and pick you back up later in the week to actually start the panel. But um, I just wanted to make sure I took a moment to say thank you very, very, very much for voting on those sketches. And number one has won. So we're starting with that sketch to turn it into a big painting. All right, I have cleared a space, I'm going to get gessoing this panel. And the windows are open. It is absolutely gorgeous out today. Tumps are gonna be falling tomorrow, but for today, going to enjoy the windows wide open. these panels all gessoed or re-gessoed I guess and the only bad thing about not having water in the studio is I have to pour a cup of water and stick my paintbrush down in and I have to remember to then take it and wash it out at the end of the studio session so um only bad thing about not having running water over here but I also did two smaller panels while I was gessoing this big one. I think I'm probably going to need another coat on, which I will probably do tomorrow. And then I might let it sit for a couple days just to make sure nothing else is going to show through. I've used this gesso many, many times in the past and have had a really good results with it. So I'm not nervous that it will turn yellow like this other stuff did, but I just want to, you know, make sure. So, um, yeah, I don't know if I'll pick you back up tomorrow to gesso these again, but I'm going to work on a few other things in here and um, yeah, probably, I don't know, pick you up maybe when I start the underpainting on this big panel. It is, um, by the way, 24 by 36 in case you're wondering. a bit of a uh, disheveled look going on here today. It is uh, windy out and if you can hear like that creaking and cracking going on in here, it is because the wind is moving everything out there. Um, 
At any rate, let me um, get my hair out of my mouth and tell you why I picked up the camera here in the studio was not to talk about the weather. All right, the reason I picked up the camera was to talk about this big panel that I'm hopefully going to be doing an underpainting on very soon. And also talk about this um, encaustic gesso that I've used to prime the panel. And in conjunction with the encaustic gesso, this sketch that I used markers on. So to put all of that together in a more cohesive sentence, um, the encaustic gesso is not waterproof. And so anything that has like a water media reacts with the encaustic gesso, like watercolor paints, ink tents, um, pencils or ink tents blocks, all of the stuff that I use to um, work with underpaintings on. And I don't mind that it affects um, the watercolor or the ink tents blocks or the ink tents pencils because it doesn't ruin the watercolor. So for example, I'm brushing it on with the brush or I'm going over it with a dry medium and then adding water to it. So it's not ruining my pencils or my blocks. It's just adding a little bit more of an opaque white finish to the overall underpainting. I'm hoping this makes sense and you're kind of, I'm, I'm explaining this correctly. But the markers that I use to do this sketch with i liked how the like scribbly effect was of the markers and i wanted to try to do that on the big panel with the underpainting for that sketch but i don't want to ruin my markers so the whole point of me picking up the camera is i'm going to put down some of this encaustic gesso onto a piece of watercolor or mixed media paper. Um, and that way I can let that dry and then test the marker over top just in a little corner area to make sure that none of that gesso is coming off on my marker tip as I don't want to ruin the markers. Okay, these two papers are now dry. And <laughs> don't mind the paint on my hands, but the papers are dry. So I'm gonna test out the markers and fingers crossed, I don't ruin any markers here. All right, good news. I think that those are going to work. I'm gonna try the Copic markers over this encaustic gesso as well, just to try those out. But I think these are gonna work. I haven't seen any white come off on the marker tips, which is what I was looking for. So um, that is very good news. So let me try the Copic markers next and we'll go from there. Okay, I think the Copic markers are gonna work as well. The um, yellow kind of had me second guessing. Um, I thought I saw a little bit of white on the end of the yellow Copic marker tip. I'm not exactly sure if that was in fact true or not because I tried the brown and nothing came off on the brown. At least it doesn't look like anything. So I'm going to um, probably get to sketching on the big panel tomorrow. Today I have to finish up a few other things for the 100 day project in here. Um, so stay tuned for that um, a future video for that but um, at any rate um, I think I will get back to this big panel and this sketch tomorrow and get the underpainting done with probably some of these markers hopefully so um, and I just wanted to say if you if whatever you're working on if uh, don't take my word for this I guess like experiment yourself and just make sure before you start a painting or something like that that it works um, with what you're doing and experiment maybe just on like a, just a little bit of the marker so you don't ruin an entire marker don't take my word for it um, they seem to work for me but um, you know you could perhaps have a different type uh, heavier hand or something like that with the marker so um, you know, just word of caution. I don't want anybody to ruin their markers by any stretch of the imagination because they are expensive. All right, 
night. I had a quick change of plans. I want to just try to get a quick layer down on this panel for this sketch. So I'm going to flip the camera around and kind of explain to you what I'm doing and then maybe I'll put it in time lapse. I'm not really sure, but um, just wanted to get this down so that this layer could dry. So then uh, tomorrow when I come back in here, I can start fresh uh, with the underpainting of some of the trees and things like that. So let me flip the camera on and show you. Okay, so here's the sketch and I think you can tell there's like some hints of oranges and um, kind of kind of oranges I would say back in the background here so I want to put a layer of orange down on this and then probably some blues up in this upper half with maybe some oranges here as well so um, you could see this panel is quite a bit larger than the actual sketch so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my ruler and take some measurements off of here and figure out like is this, um, you know, a quarter of the painting, a third of the painting, an eighth of the painting, kind of like where these lines fall here and just sketch that out really quick on the big panel. Hopefully that makes some sense. All right, I thought I would explain this a little bit further. So this is eight inches overall height. And this little piece right here goes up about a quarter of an inch, which is point. 03125 of an eighth and then up here into the middle it goes up one and a half inches which is 0.1875 now the panel is 24 inches tall and so I took 24 inches multiplied it by both of these numbers so in theory I need to go up a quarter a three quarters rather of an inch on this side here where this starts and it goes up to about four and a half inches in the middle and in theory that should be about the same perspective that this is now this isn't exactly in the middle so I'm probably going to measure over and do the same thing so um but I just thought maybe that would be helpful for some of you and to explain what I'm doing here Now it is time to let this dry and I will pick it back up tomorrow. See you then. Good morning. Back in the studio somewhat early this morning and the plan is again to get uh, this underpainting finished and maybe I'll get some encaustic medium put on it. I don't know if I'll get that far today or not, but um, I'm going to do this underpainting and at least get a few more things sketched out onto it. So let's get started. a bit of a hot mess <laughs> but I'm gonna let it dry and then uh, maybe this afternoon come back and put some wax down we'll see where the day takes me good morning 
having kind of a slow start to the day. Um, Matt is actually out of town. He left last night. He'll be back um, late tonight. So it's just kind of one night quick trip to a uh, conference that he had to go to. And um, so I'm taking kind of advantage of that and just um, having a slow morning. Been doing some reading, did some exploring outside. It is beautiful out there. And I think spring is um, right around the corner according to the daffodils and such. But I made it into the studio now and the plan is to get at least a few layers of encaustic medium on this large panel. First, I have to clean up the mess behind me and find some space to put this large panel. Um, I actually really have no idea how this setup is going to work as far as filming these um, big paintings. <laughs> I don't know if you remember, but um, in the old studio, I used to put the camera kind of across the way. I had a much deeper workspace. And um, this current workspace, <laughs> as you can see, there's not really much space to put a camera across the way. So I have to kind of put it over on the corner area here. And it's been working out for small paintings, but I'm not sure how it's going to work out for these big paintings. So I'm um, gonna try to figure that out too and um, hopefully can get some um, good camera angles uh, for these large paintings but um, we're gonna find out so let me get the wax turned on get this place cleaned up and uh, yeah we'll go from there all right the wax is pretty much almost heated up and I'm pretty much done cleaning up the countertops I just now have to figure out where the heck I'm gonna put this large painting just sitting over here which is why I'm looking over there and I thought I would show you a couple of the hundred day uh, paintings that I've done in case you haven't for whatever reason been following along with those they're coming out pretty well and um, last night or rather yesterday afternoon when I was going to put encaustic medium down on this panel I decided to tweak um, one of the paintings a bit um, even though they're small and mini paintings I still want them to be like an actual work of art and not just a, a quick um, painting, even though they're kind of quick paintings. I want them to make sure, I want to make sure that they feel finished to me and that they look good to me. So it took some time to rework one of the paintings and I'm pretty happy with it now. But um, anyways, let me just show you, there's four of them. Uh, probably by the time this video comes out, I think there's probably gonna be another one. But um, anyways, let me just show you the four that I've gotten done so far. Okay, this was the first one, which was the sugar maple tree. Then here's number two, the American beech tree. Number three, I kept really simple. This was the rhododendron. And I'm gonna try to see if I can get a couple close-ups on this one because this one is super simple. Um, not a whole lot of encaustic paint on it. Um, just a few layers of encaustic medium and some pan pastels and things like that. But I think you're gonna be able to see, I hope you're gonna be able to see if it focuses here. Yeah, there we go. That the, um, a lot of it is completely see-through. So you can see through to the very, very first layers of this one, which um, I really like. And none of these have been buffed yet. So they're still somewhat of a dull matte finish. After I buff them, they'll become really a glossy and shiny and even more see-through. So this was the third one. And then this was the last one, which is the white pine. And this was the one that I was reworking some. It, it just, it didn't look right to me. So at any rate, there is that one. So um, this project has definitely been fun and it's been nice working on a small size, especially when I start to get into this big painting. I think it'll be nice to kind of switch back and forth between the two. But um, Anyway, let me find some space to put this big painting down. I almost forgot to mention with these little mini paintings, they're going to get a float mounted onto some mat board and then um, we're gonna probably make some frames for them, some just plain white 
simple frames like we did with the mini explorations. If I remember, I'll put a screenshot of those in here. So um, there'll be a way to hang these on somebody's wall if somebody so decides to purchase them. Um, I don't know when I'm going to put them up for sale on the website or if I'm going to wait till just take them to the art show with me in the fall. Um, not sure. They're, they're not going to be done all of them till June, so I'm definitely not going to put them up for sale before then. Okay, now let me make some space for this big painting. Okay, <laughs> that was a lot of shuffling around. And I think this is gonna work out just fine for now, but I think probably what I'm going to do is order some covering to put down on this um, black top over here, the L, the other L shape, because it is a bit deeper. So, and the view is slightly different looking out this direction. So I think I was kind of putting that off, debating whether to order it or not order it. I don't want to waste money and or um, materials, things like that. But I think it'll be worth ordering something to cover that. And I don't have to cover the slate, but I want to keep it nice. So um, I'll probably just order something to cover it. And going forward in the future, be painting on this black surface instead of the other surface. Um, and let me flip the camera around here and show you a few things. All right, so here's the setup of it. And like I said, it'll work for now. It's not ideal as um, this is covering up the where I, the palette, where I mix the paint and things like that. And those I can obviously shift around, but I kind of go back and forth between the encaustic medium and the encaustic paint. And then I also don't have room really on this setup for the other griddle, which I placed over yonder and a lot of times on these big paintings you know I like to use both griddles as I have warm colors out and cool colors and I don't want to mix a bunch of mud so um, but I think it's going to work and then the other thing I wanted to show you was this cement board surface I told you guys I would report back after I put the micro crystalline on it oh gosh this was like way 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 back when and it's not bad but it's, it remains sticky. So I don't know if you could tell when I was rearranging, but stuff kind of sticks to it. It like, well, it's not gonna stick to it now because I just moved it. But once it's sitting there for a while, it does stick to it. So I'm not super convinced on this surface, so. So in case any of you were wondering about that microcrystalline surface, it works, but um, I wouldn't necessarily do it again. I would probably find another surface to, um, or another material to put down. But at any rate, um, let's get some clear encaustic medium put down on here. I also just remembered I have to figure out where the heck I'm going to set you all up at. So um, let me figure that out and then we'll get some clear encaustic medium put down. I also have switched out my torch to the big torch and I'm getting the big encaustic medium brush out as well. Big painting equals big tools. All right I'm going to apologize right now for this camera angle. Um, it's all I can do at the moment so I will work on figuring out a better solution. It might not be for this painting but um, at least you'll be able to see some of the painting getting painted. I'll try to get like different camera angles here and there, um, different shots of things. But um, I think for now, I'll probably just put you on time lapse while I put down several layers of this encaustic medium and you're only gonna be seeing like a portion of what's in my view due to how I have to or where I have to put the camera. Um, yeah, I'll work on something else. I just thought I'd show you the setup. That step ladder is so that I can reach the camera, which is mounted or sitting up there. That bag over there is to balance the other end of the camera, which sits up top there. So um, I'm sorry about the lighting. That window is kind of making it impossible to see in here at the moment. Okay, I'm 
I'm really happy with how the first several layers of encaustic medium went down on that painting. I think I put about six layers down or so, um, but it's nice and smooth. And um, while this painting probably is going to have a lot of texture to it, I always like to try to start with a nice smooth surface. It's always harder to get a smooth surface than a textured surface with encaustic. And I just think it's good practice. So at any rate, um, that is done and I'm really happy with how it came out. I'm not real happy, however, with the camera setup. Um, I don't know, I'm gonna have to do something about it. So I've looked around at um, like a silicone mat to put down on the black slate area of this and thinking that maybe that will help the camera set up. I'm not sure. Um, I, there, I couldn't find anything locally. I did a little bit of research, couldn't find anything locally. So I had to order it online. It should be here sometime next week, late next week. I'm not really sure, but I'm probably gonna still have to use the camera setup that I have going on to keep going on this painting. So hang with me through that. However, that will be in next week's video because for now, I'm gonna leave you here just so this video doesn't get too long. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna leave you here. I hope you enjoyed coming along with the start of this big painting. I'm really excited to keep going on it. So uh, stay tuned for that. If you did like this video, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out. If you're not subscribed, consider doing so because a lot more painting videos are going to be coming at you. All right, see you on the next video. Bye for now.